Hello. In some of my most recent videos, I've been working on the restoration of an old lathe, which included various methods of abrasive or mechanical rust and paint removal. In the last episode, I then performed an experiment involving electrolysis as a means of rust removal. And this episode is basically just a follow-up to that one. So I recommend you to watch that one first and you can find a link to that in the video description. What did I do in this video? Please don't expect super conclusive advice in this video. This is really just an experiment like the title says. So what I basically did is to buy a commercial rust remover gel named Rostio, which is available here in my home country of Germany. And I talked about it in one of my videos and some of the commenters said that it is most probably based on citric acid. So what I did is to buy some citric acid in a local store and I also bought some cider vinegar, which is also available in most grocery stores. So I basically applied the commercial product and the two more DIY methods and tried to use it on various rusty parts made from different materials. And this video is basically just a documentation of that process. Now, all of these methods work, but the question really was if you could use them in a time frame of just one day to remove a reasonable amount of rust from differently shaped objects made from different ferrous materials. So in this video, we will go through my experiments on all of these three methods and we will take a look at each step along the way. But there are some general preparations that have to be made for all of those methods and that's what I'm going to show you first. So on the right side of the screen, you see the egg set that I used in the electrolysis uh, test and the one that I'm cleaning off here will be used together with citric acid and so we will have a comparison between these kind of similar objects and I'm just using a ordinary wire brush to remove the really loose and crusty outer parts of the rust on the workpiece and that is something that you should do no matter what process follows after that. Next I have to remove the grease or fat that can still be on the surface and especially if you're using some kind of chemical to treat the workpiece, you want to make sure that there is none of that left. And you can do that with universal thinner, for example. In this case, I'm using gasoline. And if you do this, you should do it outside because it's really not such a great feeling to inhale all those gasoline vapors. And then you can rub off the surfaces with a towel and let it all dry before you go on with anything else. So with the parts prepared, we can start the experiment with the cider vinegar here in Germany called Apfelessig. And as it says, it has a acid content of 5%. And if I'm not mistaken, that would be acidic acid. And we just take another plastic box as a container here. We fill in the cider vinegar and the work pieces that I have chosen here are an old steel divider compass with only very slight rust on the surface. Then a really heavily corroded blade from an old wood planer from about a hundred years ago. And uh, another piece that I will add in just a second and that is a cast iron cog wheel also at least 100 years old. And here you see the first limitation, the bottle only has 750 milliliters, that would be about one quarter of a gallon, and it costs about two euros or so, so that makes us comparatively expensive, and I have to tilt over the tank in order to even submerge the three parts that I have chosen. So about five hours have gone by, and when looking inside the tank, you don't really see a lot of change. But when I take this brush and rub a little bit of stuff off the surfaces, you can see that a lot of material is coming loose. There is a darker color in the vinegar itself and you see lots of rust particles lying on the ground of the tank. So in the meanwhile, I went to sleep and did some other stuff. And after I returned, 16 hours had gone by with the parts inside the tank. I took out the compass and the cogwheel and I used some steel wool to work on the finish of the surfaces, rubbed it off and then oiled the parts. And you can see here that the color of the surface is kind of grayish, kind of matte. And that might be a sign that this divider compass was maybe a bit too long inside the vinegar. Because yes, the acid also reacts with the iron, not only with the oxides of the iron. 
But I'd say after these 16 hours, all in all, we have good results, both with the divider compass as well as with this gear. The blade from the wood planer, however, will take much longer, I guess, if this stuff is even strong enough to get off the thick rust on the surface. So to give an answer to the basic question formulated at the beginning of the video, is cider vinegar something that you can use to clean off some rust from a part within a day? Yes, you can. But I guess you should only use it for projects where there is only light rust on the surfaces as with the divider we have seen here. And by the way, these parts have been washed off under running water after I took them from the tank. Some people also use chemical means of neutralizing the acid that might still be somewhere in the indentations and on the surfaces. But I simply used water and rubbed it all off good and I guess in this case that should be enough. And this is the citric acid that I bought at the supermarket nearby and it's typically sold as a lime scale remover and the recipes or concentrations that you will find recommended on the backside here are also intended for that purpose. For this experiment I chose a concentration of 125 grams per liter which is very close to one pound per gallon. Now some people will choose a higher concentration or even totally saturate the solution meaning to put so much inside that no more citric acid can be solved in the water. And that is because the more rusted work pieces you put inside the tank and the longer you wait, the weaker, the less potent the acid will become. And even though this is a comparatively weak acid, you should wear protective glasses all the time, which I did and probably also protective gloves, which I sometimes did and sometimes didn't. I simply forgot that from time to time. So by now the pieces have been inside the solution for two hours. We see that the solution has become yellowish and that gas bubbles are rising up from the work pieces. So what does that mean? As far as I know, what we call rust is a combination of iron two oxide, iron three oxide, and crystallization water. So the citric acid reacts with the iron three ions in the rust and is creating a new chemical compound, a complex chemical called iron citrato complex. And that's where the color comes from, I guess. And the bubbles that we see rising from the workpiece is H2, so hydrogen gas. And that is because there is not only a reaction with the iron three ions in the rust, but also with the iron itself. So the, um, there is also a corrosion taking place, an oxidation reaction. And as part of that, H plus ions are released. And those H plus ions combine to hydrogen gas, which means an increase in volume of that molecule. And that helps to push away the rust from the surface. And of course, once that hydrogen gas is free, it will rise from the workpiece to the surface of the tank and so on. So a lot of people will wonder now how it is possible to use the citric acid to remove the rust because I just said that it actually corrodes the iron, the Fe. And the reason why no new rust is generated during this process is that the iron uh, three oxide that is generated by this corrosion reaction is also built into that iron citrato complex that I was talking before. So we have actually two reactions that work side by side. One of them attacks the rust, the other one attacks the iron. But at least as long as the reaction is still going on, no new rust can be created on the surface. But what that second thing that corrosion is doing is that it takes away some of the iron material. And that is of course something that you don't want and that is why you don't want to have a workpiece submersed in this citric acid solution any longer than necessary. So this is basically what I could find out about this reaction online. I have some sources for that which I will post in the video description but they are in German. I'm sorry I didn't find anything in English on that yet. So this large iron pulley here has been inside the tank for about five hours. And as always, it's washed after coming out of the tank, then dried with a towel, then scraped off with some steel wool and oiled with ballastol. And the same is also done to our X head that we have put inside. 
and also to this Mauser brand adjustable wrench here. And here you have some before and after pictures for a direct comparison of the results and the original state. So what is my conclusion about citric acid as a chemical rust remover so far? Well, if you use it at the concentration that I use today, it is kind of cheap to make and works really well. If you use the concentration I used, which is one pound per gallon, then you can make 40 liters, which is about 10 gallons for under 20 bucks if you order the stuff online. But you have to check your work constantly because the acid is also reacting with the iron, not just with the iron oxides. And you shouldn't keep your stuff too long in the tank. You also should have a warm place and it should be well ventilated and you also should wear some protective gear. Okay, the next thing that we have to talk about is Rostio. Now, maybe you're not particularly interested in this review because this is a German product and I don't know if it's even sold in other countries. But this can still be interesting for you because in your country, wherever you live, there will be some rust remover that is gelatinous and not a fluid like the ones we saw before. And you will see that this has advantages and disadvantages. And for the parts that I'm treating here, I try to apply the material with a brush and with a spoon and so on but the problem is that the material won't really stick on the surface but due to the forces of gravity it will be pulled down and pretty much end up at the bottom of whatever vessel you're using to hold your work pieces. Also it's kind of hard to apply the material in a homogeneous way. There will always be spots where the layer is just thicker or thinner and the manual says to apply a layer that is between three and six millimeters depending on the strength of the rust between one quarter and one eighth of an inch so you have kind of a thick layer that you need here and the problem simply is that it's all pulled down and doesn't stay on the surfaces. Now here you see a result after two hours of waiting you can see that Rostio has turned yellow just like the citric acid solution that you saw before and that kind of hardens the suspicion that I uttered earlier in this video that maybe Rostio is also based on citric acid. Here you can see that this blade that I just washed off is still pretty rusty so it would at least need another new layer of Rostio. And here you can see the results after 16 hours and what I'm doing here is to wash off the Rostio gel from the surfaces of the workpieces. And you can see that, at least in this experiment, the Rostio really wasn't the right solution. Because even though a lot of rust has been removed, you can see that the surfaces are very inhomogeneous. You know, there are spots with a lot of rust and next to that spots with nearly blank metal. So what I ended up doing here is to put it all into a new tank of citric acid just as with the stuff before and treated all the stuff again for another 10 hours or so and basically did the same thing you saw in the citric acid rust removal experiment. So is this stuff useless? Well, no, not really. It's just better suited when you have work pieces that cannot be submersed in a tank. Like for example here on this tailstock of my lathe that I'm restoring at the moment, I applied the Rostio gel directly on this hand wheel and it stuck quite well overnight and I was capable of rubbing it off the next day, washing it off and then rubbing it off with a piece of steel wool and the result was really good. So a gelatinous, maybe a citric acid based rust remover like this can be used on smaller parts that are part of a large machine that cannot be submersed in a tank. But if it came to choosing between another Rostio product because they also have fluids and just, just general citric acid, I would probably stick with a citric acid because it might just be way cheaper. And here another before and after comparison for the parts that had not only to suffer through 16 hours of Rostio treatment but also another 10 hours of citric acid bath. And here we have some last footage of the overview of all the parts before all of the treatment and here after all of the treatment. And you can see that all of them kinda turned out well so as we say in Germany viele Wege führen nach Rom.
You know, there are many ways that will lead you to Rome. And all the other hundred thousand suggestions of all kinds of assets and so on that can be used for this. Now, how will I go on from this point? Well, I will focus on the lathe restoration project in the coming weeks. And I invite you to watch those videos. If you haven't seen them yet, you can find that in the video description. And then I also said that I would make a video about molasses or rust removal and that will come in a couple of weeks as well. And I will post a link to that video as soon as it's online. So I hope you like this and see you soon.